Welcome Cryptopians to Total Crypto Updates, bringing you another video for real deep dives into the crypto industry. I can't promise to only speak about crypto, but I can promise everything will be overstood. Let's dive into today's very dense crypto update. Starting off today, we will speak on the exciting news in the long-awaited Ripple vs. SEC case. Ripple, whose founders created the XRP cryptocurrency and are now embroiled in a high-profile legal battle with the Securities and Exchange Commission over its claim that XRP was illegally sold as an unregistered security, has received a veritable treasure trove of email messages and documents from within the agency. Ripple's general counsel, Stuart Alderity, tweeted the news on Thursday, declaring victory in an 18-month battle, within a broader war, over the collection of discovery materials known as the Hinman Documents. The documents concern former SEC Director William Hinman and a well-publicized 2018 lecture in which he asserted that Ethereum, like Bitcoin, was sufficiently decentralized and hence not subject to federal securities law. A federal district judge overruled the SEC's repeated attempts to prevent Ripple from accessing the documents, which the company believes will reveal internal deliberations and discussions that led to the controversial declaration that appears to favor Bitcoin and Ethereum over alternatives like XRP. In January, Ripple acquired the right to request the records. According to Alderity, contrary to the beliefs of several industry observers, the documents will significantly strengthen Ripple's case. While they remain classified for the time being, at the SEC's insistence, I can say that the battle was well worth it, he tweeted. I've always felt confident in our legal arguments, and I feel even more confident today. I have always felt horrible about the SEC's actions, but now I feel even worse. Brad Garlinghouse, CEO of Ripple, went even further. Even as his company celebrated its 10th anniversary hours prior to the release of the records, he vented his anger on Twitter. The SEC's pursuit of a policy purpose is not about faithful adherence to the law, he wrote. It is about power. This strategy disregards the companies and individuals it has hurt. We should all be outraged. Clearly, the SEC has forgotten that the government serves the people. In reaction to the announcement made by his general counsel, Garlinghouse criticized the SEC once more, stating, don't believe them when they say they care about disclosure, transparency, and clarity. When the truth inevitably comes out, you will be shocked by the reprehensibility of their behavior here, he added. Although gaining access to the materials surrounding Hinman's 2018 speech could provide substantial insight into his thought process and that of his colleagues at the SEC, Ripple's attorneys also anticipate deposing the former SEC director. This judgment was rendered immediately after another court barred the SEC's attempt to gain access to records concerning executive salaries at Ripple. The development will undoubtedly reignite the protracted battle, in which both Ripple and the SEC recently requested a summary judgment rather than a trial. The push for a swift resolution of the dispute accompanied a 44% surge in XRP's value. Ripple challenged the SEC's motion, arguing that the agency remains without a valid legal basis to support its central allegation that Ripple was obligated to register XRP as a security. Just just week, a judge approved individual XRP holders' desire to participate in the proceedings. Notably, current SEC Chair Gary Gensler has not publicly and specifically remarked on Hinman's assessment, limiting his comments to Bitcoin and ignoring the Ethereum seas that flooded Director Hinman. The court has repeatedly rejected the SEC's arguments about deliberative process privilege, DPP, and attorney-client privilege. After examining the documents, Alderity now says that it was well worth the fight. Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse says that the SEC's shamefulness will be shocking for those who follow the case. The SEC wants you to think that it cares about disclosure, transparency, and clarity. Don't believe them, Garlinghouse said. Ripple is as not arguing the fair notice defense, but is arguing that the fair notice defense is an issue of fact which should go to a jury trial. Furthermore, Hogan commented via Twitter that Ripple's attorneys are referring to the case, Revic v. SEC Realty Corporation It's a Second Circuit case and binding authority, he continues. 
The briefs are scheduled to be made public next Monday, but last month the SEC ignored that deadline and filed it a day early. So, be on the lookout anytime Sunday or Monday for those to drop. After that, there's just one more brief on November 15th and then we are basically done. A member of the XRP community and attorney, Jeremy Hogan, has provided some helpful commentary on the Ripple v. SEC lawsuit. As he explains, yesterday both parties filed under seal reply briefs to each other's requests for summary judgment with the court. The public was expected to remain unaware of their existence until Monday. However, the financial technology company released its 89-page response brief a few hours ago. The 89-page document will be in the description below. Now on to an article posted by BeingCrypto.com. Recent and Upcoming Airdrops TCU is not in any way recommending any of these airdrops or in any way sponsored. This is just a bonus segment for our subscribers. Please do your own research diligently before entering any airdrops. But for those who can afford the risk, hey race a chance for a few extra gains. Aptus ADP airdrop chances from L2 Rollup Arbitrum, the SUI Testnet, and ZK Sync are coming. The Aptus Foundation airdropped 20,076,150 APT tokens to 110,235 people on October 20, 2022, giving them $6,000. Aptus is a scalable layer 1 blockchain. Two X Meta workers began the initiative. Move is its smart contract language. Pipelining boosts transaction throughput. It's modular, allowing upgrades. Upcoming NFT airdrops include Blurred, I.O., an NFT marketplace and aggregator for pro traders. Airdrops are gifts for trading NFTs in the last six months. Care packages contain Blur coins that won't be visible until January 2023, when Blurred, I.O. introduces governance. The first airdrop is to increase visitors to the site, the second is for people who actively list on Blur. If you list an NFT on Blurred, I.O. within 13 days, you can still get the first airdrop. You can advance in 2022. Arbitrum and Ethereum Layer 2 Rollup may also airdrop tokens. In Q4 2022 or early 2023, tokens could arrive. For eligibility, some recommend bridging to Arbitrum. L2 announced Arbitrum Odyssey earlier this year to qualify you for specific Arbitrum NFTs, which could be airdrop eligibility criterion. The Odyssey contained weekly chores that earned you an NFT. Offchain Labs interrupted Odyssey to update Arbitrum's Nitro. Since Nitro was upgraded around the Ethereum merge, Arbitrum will likely restart Odyssey soon. Arbitrum's Discord could get you an airdrop. Chain 1 Testnet users will receive SUI tokens. SUI Testnet tokens can be stored in the SUI Wallet Google Chrome plugin. SUI's Discord server and NFT marketplace Faucet offer Testnet tokens. To maximize your chances of acquiring ZKS tokens from Zero Knowledge L2 Rollup ZK Sync, participate with the ZK Sync Testnet, Bridging Activities, Decentralized Applications, an NFT platform, and wallet service. Twitter has more details. The Rage token hasn't been published. By depositing TriCrypto and opening a leveraged ETH perpetual contract, one could receive an airdrop. Sturdy Finance, an Ethereum borrowing and lending technology, has teased an airdrop. It may assist to borrow against stable coins as collateral. Starknet may soon host airdrops. Ethereum-based Starknet is zero knowledge. 10K Swap, a Starknet-based automated market creator, has hinted at an airdrop. Alpha Road Finance will also airdrop ASTR tokens. Alpha Road Finance investors can stake and claim rewards. Moving on to an article posted by you today. Hackers stole Bitcoin from controlled exchanges like FTX. On October 19, consumers lost $1.6 million utilizing 3 commas API. Someone traded DMG more than 5,000 times and stole $1.6 million in BTC, ETH, FTT, and other digital assets from the user's account. 
Most likely, hackers took control of the account through a 3 commas API breach and conducted questionable transactions. The victim filed a police report, however FTX did not prevent the attack via trading API or freeze assets. 3 commas reports no leaks and normal service. In circumstances when 3 commas is not involved, FTX remains the lone source of the attack making it significantly worse than practically every exchange user and a potential target. Posted on Finbold.com Hong Kong to regulate crypto Hong Kong's regulators are considering allowing individual investors to directly invest in digital assets, South China Morning Post reported October 17. According to the report, the likely shift in attitude comes amid an outflow of financial technology expertise from Hong Kong weakening the territory's standing as a crypto sector powerhouse to Singapore's favor. Hong Kong indicated it would release its new policy statement on cryptocurrencies during Fintech Week, in line with a goal of turning Hong Kong into a worldwide virtual assets center. China maintains a countrywide prohibition on crypto services, but exceptions exist. A Chinese court recently decided that investors can still trade cryptocurrencies as long as they are treated as virtual assets and not as currency, Finbold reported. China has been among the top 10 countries using cryptocurrencies for two months. Posted on BeingCrypto.com Bloomberg stated on October 20 that FTX.US and Voyager Digital may repay most cash. The October 19 deal cannot be concluded until Voyager's bankruptcy payment plan is authorized. Voyager customers might recoup 72% of their account's value if the deal goes through. FTX bid $1.42 billion for Voyager's assets in late September. Voyager customers would be moved to the FTX exchange and given back their digital assets. Sam Bankman FTX Frides Exchange's native coin hasn't reacted well to the recent twist. FTT prices fell 5% in 24 hours to $22.35 during Asian trading. FTT has declined 9% in the past two weeks, from $25 to current pricing. Since its all-time high of $84 in September 2021, it's fallen 73%. Texan securities regulators are investigating the company. In the Voyager bankruptcy case, Joe Rotunda is investigating FTX and its crypto millionaire owner. The regulator believes the business sold Texans interest-bearing securities. Rotunda asked the New York bankruptcy court to halt the FTX sale. That will conclude today's update on trending news in the crypto world. Remember, the social media platforms will be up and running next week. With the last channel being deleted, we must now start over. Don't forget we have a $50 giveaway for when we hit 200 subs and followers on all social platforms. We also raised the giveaway for 1,000 subs on YouTube to a $200 giveaway. Don't miss out, all you have to do is like, follow, subscribe and tag as many people as you can. We will be watching who tags who and keeping tabs on which one of those tags actually followed and subscribed. I repeat, this is not a random drawing. Anyone can compute the giveaways themselves. Good day, good night, and goodbye.